Morning, Matt Middleton likes again. Oh, the sun's in my eyes. It's actually stopped raining for the first time in about three or four days. So I thought I'd make the most of it and um, see what I could get. It's actually due this afternoon. But I'm not holding any high hopes for today because so far it's absolutely dead. I've been out for about 20 minutes and I've hardly seen anything. But I don't know, if I get one shot, I'll be happy with that. Well, the weather's starting up alright, the clouds are rolling in and the wind's picking up and I still haven't seen much. So I'm going to make the most of it and get over to like the lakes before it gets too windy and too cloudy. Hopefully I'll get some more shots of, uh, I don't know, some warblers or, I don't know, maybe a pelican. As you can see, not a lot going on. And I put the hat on, it's windy up here. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do it too good today. But, if I get a shot of something good, I'll be alright if it's just one, which I've already said. Just one will do. One good one. I've just missed some um, oyster catchers flying directly at me. I didn't realise until the last minute and they was flying right at me. I took a few shots but I don't think I have an hour to I'm going to have a walk up the top where the little birds are because I think it's a bit windy up here for the birds on the uh, water if I'm honest. So what started off was a quiet day, eventually picked up, I got a few shots I think and uh, probably the best group photos I've ever got. So not too bad really, although quiet in every other kind of bird not really a lot about, but I'll show you the photos that I've got and, and then we'll crack on with the greaves.
So as I said before, I'm going to do a little series where I concentrate on one particular bird. This week it's Greaves. I'll show you some of the photos I've took in the past. If I'm honest, I don't really like taking photos of Greaves. Well, I don't mind, it's not the photos, it's the editing. I find editing Greaves fairly difficult because the beaks always seem to come out and don't look real but I think that's the way it is. So I'll show you some of the photos that I've took of Greaves in the past. I think I got my shot of the day. It was a great crusty groove. It was um, the closest shot I've ever got of a groove, so that's why I'm kind of hoping it's my shot of the day. The lighting wasn't the best, but it wasn't too bad. Um, I'm gonna have a quick look in the hide, and then I'm gonna come out, and if the uh, if he's still there, then I might get the uh, tripod out and do a few better shots if I can. So let's go and have a look in the hide. pretty lucky today because I'm actually the closest I've ever been to a group without it flying away so I'm hoping these photos will turn out pretty good as you can see the group is in the middle of the frame and I'm using my camera today on a tripod to lower the ISO I've got the Shutter speed down to 1,000th of a second and the ISO is at 800 but I'm trying different settings at different apertures just to see what comes out the best. Kind of waited about to see if, if the groups are doing anything a little bit more interesting, but they were kind of just sitting on the nest, and that was it today. And I've been sitting down, well, crouching down in the stingers for a good hour now, and my legs have gone numb. So I'm going to walk back now. It kind of picked up a little bit, I think. Got a few shell ducks in the hide, but it's still a bit windy. So I'm going to edit, edit, edit. So I'm going to head back now, see what I've got, 
um, and then I'll uh, I'll show you how I edit one of the photos. Okay, so jumping straight into the editing. One thing I've learned with editing groups is the more you do, the worse they look. So what I've tried to do recently with all my group photos is do as little as possible, really. So let's talk in and I'll just show you what I mean. So this is one of the images that I've decided to edit. Um, the first thing I do is go to the profile settings and I'll set it for Adobe Color. Once in Adobe Color, um, I'll increase the shadows around about there. Decrease the highlights if they're needed. I'm always keeping a high, my eye on the histogram that I don't blow anything out, but it's more or less okay, I think. I might be able to just increase them shadows a little bit more. Yep. Um, then I'm going to crop it. Try and keep the bird level. Always try and give the bird plenty of room to look where it wants to go. So you can kind of either center it or, you know, use the rule of thirds. But I'm not really a big fan of the rule of thirds. Um, I like breaking the rules. So, yeah, do what you want. Make your image look the way you want it to look. So I'm going to go with that. Something like that, that'll do. Um, first thing I'm going to do is run it through Topaz Denoise. So edit in and then Topaz Denoise. Most of you that have watched my videos already will notice I use this a lot. I really do rate this program. Um, if you haven't got it, I highly suggest you buy it. It's well worth the money and um, it solves a load of your problems with regards to using high ISOs and uh, obviously getting a lot of grain in your image and noise it removes all that. As always I always use the low light setting and turn the enhanced sharpness down. I more or less half it to what it tells me it needs so that's what I'm going to go for. I've realized I don't like sharp images and prefer them to have a little bit of a soft look. So, round about there. I don't really like the blues, so I'm going to just change the blues very slightly. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go up to the masking tool. Select background. Then I'm going to slightly change that blue. A little bluer. Yep, that'll do, mate. And then I'm going to create new mask and select subject. I always edit the two items, the background and the actual main item separate. I don't use global settings for the lot. So once in this, I'm going to slightly increase the texture. As I said, you've got to watch what you're doing with grooves. It's the beak. The beak looks kind of plastic. Um, and I found that you can really overdo it in this. I'm going to try increasing the exposure a little bit. 
not too much, just a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to just try the dehaze again, just a very little bit. Uh, the sharpness again, just a very little bit. And I think that is about it. I don't want to do too much at all. Right back to the overall image. So coming off the masks, I noticed there's some kind of like magenta or a purple tint in the water, and I don't like that. So I'm going to turn that down. See if that makes any difference. Mm, very slightly by the magenta. No, not really. But I'll go with that. Um, what I'll do then is while I'm in the main settings then I keep an eye and try and push my blacks and my whites as much as I can so slowly push my blacks until you can see it clipping here and then just back off and again with your whites but don't do it too much because you'll blow out his face highlights in his face I'm not going to go that high I'm going to there and um, I think that is where I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to do much, much more. What I might do is I'll select the background again. Use the mask. Remember white reveals, black conceals. So I can see by the red already showing when I hover over that. that that's what I'm selecting. I'm just, just going to decrease the texture a little bit. Kind of brings him forward. A little bit more and um, that's more or less all I want to do so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to jump into Photoshop and just do a few more little touch-ups you can do it in Lightroom but I think Photoshop's a lot better for doing it in so right mouse button editing editing Photoshop that'll open up once it's in Photoshop I'm going to duplicate the layer and I want to get rid of the white bit between the the white bits between the hair so between the feathers so I'm going to use the clone tool and I'm going to go up to the mode and change that to darken and then I'm going to highlight press alt over where I want to take the color from left click on the mouse button and then I'm just going to paint over the white bits or the lighter bits. It probably would have helped if I'd have zoomed in a little bit more for this. But no, I've seen, I think I've done that. Um, I might, while I'm here, just increase the eye colour a little bit. So go to the dodge and burn tool, or the dodge tool, click the dodge tool. Roughly make it the same size as the eye. Make sure it's set to mid-tones and the exposure is fairly low. And a couple of clicks of that just to get it to where you want. Once I've done that, I'm just going to darken the shadows between the feathers a little bit. So again, back to the dodge and burn tool. Shadows, low exposure, and just a few clicks on the darker parts. That go into the whites because it kind of gives you a little bit more contrast and then I just want to bring up the brightness in this part here in the feathers so I'll do the opposite and go to dodge keeping it in the mid-tones I'll make the brush fairly big so I want to try and keep it uniform and then maybe just one or two little touches here and there to kind of bring a little bit of colour back. If you go too much press Ctrl and Z and it'll take it back. Um, but that's it I think. I'm not going to do any more. So file, save and that'll save that back into Lightroom. Once back in Lightroom I always like to have a look from where it's come from just in case I've gone too far or it just looks completely wrong. As I said I like to keep it as close to the original as possible but obviously bring up some details and some colour I think that's 
what I did in that. So if we compare the two, that was before and that's after. Um, and I think that's kind of right. Maybe a little bit too much on the blues, so I can bring the blues down a little bit. But yep, that'll do me on that one. So that's it. So thanks for watching. Until next time.